It's August 25th, 2015. Pittsburgh Steelers backup Bruce Gradkowski is diagnosed with a dislocated finger and will be missing a good chunk of the season. Unproven fifth round pick Landry Jones is the only backup quarterback left. So obviously the Steelers are in need of a backup. Having Landry Jones who hasn't taken a meaningful snap thus far in his first two NFL seasons as your primary backup is risky business. Fortunately, Big Ben played every game in 2013 and 2014. If this kept up, it was looking like the Steelers wouldn't be in dire need of a backup, but from simply an insurance standpoint, we most definitely needed one. Nationwide is on your side. It just so happens a quarterback by the name of Michael Vick was available. But let's rewind a little bit and see how Michael Vick got to the point where he ended his NFL career with the Pittsburgh Steelers. We know Mike Vick's story, drafted number one overall by the Falcons in 2000. He became their franchise quarterback, a superstar. He had the Madden cover and was hands down the best player in the game, a glitch essentially. Signature Nike shoes, the commercials, becoming the highest paid NFL player as well. But it all came crashing down. In 2007, Vic was sentenced to 23 months in prison on dogfighting charges. He did his time and then after coming out of prison, signed with the Philadelphia Eagles. He was signed to be a backup quarterback to McNabb and occasionally come in for certain formations. Fast forward one year and McNabb is traded to Washington. That means Vic is the new starter in Philly, right? No. Eagles go with Kevin Kolb, a quarterback Andy Reid drafted in the second round and viewed as the Eagles' future. So Vic is still the Eagles' backup. But that doesn't last long because in the first game of the 2010 season, Kolb is knocked out with an injury. Vic comes in and throws dots and kept throwing dots the rest of the season, putting himself in the MVP conversation. Eagles ended up losing in the playoffs, but due to his epic season, Vic landed a second $100 million contract and was the Eagles QB1 for the foreseeable future. The Vic comeback story ends happily ever after in Philly, right? Not true. His next two seasons were riddled with injury and he never really got back to his 2010 form. It got to the point where the Eagles and Vic restructured his contract in 2013, so it basically became a one-year deal. Vic had an amazing start to 2013, but eventually tailed off and then got injured and was replaced by this guy, Nick Foles, who ended up throwing for 27 touchdowns and two interceptions that season. Vic was done in Philly. 2014, Vic signs with the Jets on a one-year deal and chose to wear number one. Why? Because his signature number seven was being worn by Geno Smith. At 34 years old, Vic's Jets season was spent mostly as a backup but they get an unlikely win as a starter against our beloved Steelers. But since he only signed a one-year deal with New York, Vic becomes a free agent again in 2015. Greg Kowski dislocated his left finger and is having surgery today and will be out three to four weeks. Vic signed with the Steelers on another one-year deal. Number seven was taken by, well, seven. And number one is unofficially retired by Gary Anderson. So Vic went with number two. Vic addressed his past and talked about regretting it being thankful for a second chance and also continuing to do things to make it right. Yet there were still people that protested the signing. Despite all the protests, Vic was still a Steeler, and his first game action would be in the preseason against the Buffalo Bills. Solid opening performance, 4-5, 106 yards, 118 QB rating, and this tier dropped to Martavis. Then in the Steelers' last preseason game, he went 3-5, 24 yards, not as good, but still had another connection with Martavis. You were the chosen one! Preseason ends. Vic is the clear-cut quarterback, too. There's no Haskins versus Mason-esque type of backup quarterback battle going on. Season begins. Steelers start off with a loss against New England, bounce back with a win against the 49ers, then week three, we play the St. Louis Rams. The offense looks fine, we're winning the game, and then boom. All of a sudden, the Steelers' season hangs in the balance. Big Ben goes down with an injury, and no one knew how long he'd be out. So Vic gets his first shot at playing time in the regular season. This was his main highlight as he finished the game with 5 of 6, 38 yards, a .5 QBR, but a 93.1 QB rating. He did enough to get the dub, and it was against none other than Nick Foles. Nice. Full circle moment. The good news is Big Ben is not out for the season. The Steelers are 2-1 and one and play Baltimore next week at Heinz Field. With Big Ben being out, Vic starts his first game as a Pittsburgh Steeler. He made some really nice passes that were on the money like this one. Come on, bro, catch the ball. Who was that, Lima Swede? With the Steelers being down 7-3, Vic helped out in unconventional ways, like being the lead blocker for Le'Veon Bell as he takes a broken play and houses it for seven. Vic also threw this dot to Darius Hayward Bay in the third to get the Steelers up 20-7. Ultimately, Vic did everything you would have asked of him to win this game, but it was the missed field goals by Josh Scobie that cost the Steelers from getting the win in regulation. Top that off with two failed fourth down conversions in overtime, one of them would have simply been a 50-yard field goal, but we didn't trust Scobie. Our offense was running out of steam and options, which led to Justin Tucker draining a 52-yarder. Ravens get the win 23-20. 
Big Ben is still out with an injury. Vic gets his second start. There's really nothing from that Ravens game that happened that would make you want to go with Landry. It's at the Chargers, Monday night. Are you ready for the football? Like last week, Le'Veon Bell had a field day, but was pretty much our only offense. Vic struggled and the offense looked very limited. Our defense helped us out though. Antoine Blake gets a pick and then takes it to the house. And then there's sad Phillip Rivers. Struggles continue on offense, and we have an Antonio Gates sighting. And happy Phillip Rivers. With the Steelers being down seven, all hope looked lost. How was the offense going to score? We got play action. Roll out. Vic finds a wide open Marcus Wheaton for a touchdown. And the Steelers are alive 17 to 17. Chargers respond with a field goal. 36 seconds left. One timeout. Third and six. Can the Steelers get in the field goal range and tie it up? Vic is clutch and scrambles for over 20 yards. The field goal is pretty much locked up. But remember what happened last week. That kick is no gimme. However, the Steelers did happen to cut Scobie. Signed a kicker by the name of Chris Boswell, so yeah, there's probably a better chance the kick would be made, but we didn't know that back then. It's third and 10. Vic drops back and delivers a strike to Heath. Timeout. Five seconds left. Vic is lined up at wide receiver. Wildcat formation. Bell takes it himself. Wins the game. Vic finished the game with 203 yards, one touchdown, and one interception. Ben is still out with an injury. Vic is the answer then. And after last game, still no reason to put Landry in, right? Right. Steelers are sitting at 3-2 and two and face off against the Arizona Cardinals at the big catch-up bottle. And Martavis is back. He was suspended for the first four games of the season, then he missed an extra game, but who cares, he's back. So we have Steelers versus Cardinals, Tomlin versus Bruce Arians. And yeah, this is where the wheels officially fall off. Vic could not get things going and the offense looked inept. He was 3 of 8, 6 yards of the first half, although he did have 47 yards on the ground, the offense as a whole was pretty stagnant. With the Steelers down 10 to three, minutes into the third quarter, Vic rolled out to the left, took it himself for about six or seven yards, gets injured, and then has to sit out the rest of the game. So remember this guy? Yeah, the guy the Steelers didn't trust to be their primary backup? Yeah, Landry Jones. Well, because Vic got injured, he came in and actually sparked the offense. Let a comeback effort and help the team get the W. Connecting multiple times with the Steelers' top wide receivers, A.B. and Martavis, including this last one, which Martavis pretty much embarrasses the whole Cardinals defense and shows why he is probably one of the top 10 NFL players who didn't reach their potential. And remember that measly play where Vic got tripped up and exited the game? Well, that ended up being his last play as a Pittsburgh Steeler. The following week, Big Ben again wasn't healthy enough to play, but Vic wasn't active either. Instead, Landry was the starter, and a guy by the name of Tyler Murphy was his backup. Then we have some conflicting reports. On November 2nd, Vic says his hamstring is 100% healthy, but on the 3rd, Tomlin says he doesn't know if Vic is healthy. Then on November 8th, Big Ben gets hurt again, Landry comes in and helps the Steelers pull off another win. And here's where things get interesting. The following week, the Steelers play the Browns. Landry gets to start because of Ben's injury, and who is the backup? Not a supposedly healthy Michael Vick, but rather an injured Big Ben. And what do you know? Landry goes down in the first series and an injured Ben comes in and throws for 379 yards and three touchdowns as a backup. Ben ended up staying healthy the rest of the season and Landry remained quarterback too. So that's it? Yeah, pretty much. Even though in the 2016 offseason, Vic said he wanted to play one more year and come back as a Steeler. But after not getting picked up by any team, the following offseason, Vic officially announced his retirement from the NFL. So there you have it, Michael Vick and his season as a Pittsburgh Steeler.